Number eight then from this new hire using the specimen paper. This is paper two. It's an optimization question. Yes, it's still there. And in the same two parts. In the first part, you have to derive this expression that you've to optimize. And in part B, you have to optimize it. Now, it refers to this solid shape here, where you have a circular base, curved sides for the cylinder, and a hemispherical the top. Gives the dimensions as H for the height of the cylindrical part and R for the radius of this hemisphere. So it's just as well they had that radius indicated along the way and not up the way. So what's the first part? So what is the area then of this? We've got a flat circular base. So that'll just be a nice circle pi r squared. Then you have the curved sides of the cylinder, which remember would open out into a flat rectangle, whose dimensions would be it's got to wrap around the base. So that's the circumference times the height. Don't use pi d though. Pi d was fine for the definition of pi, but all formulas for circles tend to have r, so you'd use 2 pi r. So that's 2 pi r h for the curved sides, and the top's a hemisphere, so its area will be a half of 4 pi r squared. Problem here, there's two variables, there's r and h. That's why in the question, it gives you a connection. It says the volume of the cylindrical part, apart from this hump at the top, is 100 cubic metres. So the volume then of the cylindrical part, pi r squared h, area base times height, it said was 100 square metres. Which means that you can rearrange that to get h in terms of r. h will be 100 divided by pi r squared. That can then replace this h so that now a can be expressed as a function solely of r alone. And that would be pi r squared plus 2 pi r, but times this now, 100 over pi r squared plus, and a half of 4 is 2, so another 2 lots of pi r squared. This always happens in the first part of these optimizations. You've got two variables, so you've got some other statement that connects them that allows you to replace one of them. Now just tidy this up. Well, those two together make 3 pi r squared. The 2 times the 100 makes 200. The pi cancels out the pi, the r cancels out one of the r's, so that leaves you 200 over r. So there's your expression. So that wasn't too bad. Now for part B. Determine the value of R which minimises the amount of metal needed to build the container. So that means which minimises the surface area, which means which minimises this expression. Well, differentiate it. Now it's possible just to differentiate that straight away just by thinking multiply by the power, that would be negative 1. Take 1 off the power means it'll go to negative 2. So just put a 2 and a negative in, that would do, but maybe I'll just set it all out. So that's 200 r to the negative 1 plus 3 pi r squared. Now differentiate it, now that you've got your separate terms with the variable on top expressed with their powers. So a dashed of r would be negative 200, multiply by the power negative 200 r, take 1 off the power negative 2 plus, multiply by the power 6 pi, take 1 off the power just r. But you're going to be using this result. So I'll put it into a manageable form. In fact, I might swap the terms over just to get the positive one at the front. So minus 200 and r to the negative 2 means over r squared. There's my derivative. Now, I'll get my optimum value when the derivative, if there is any optimum value, is equal to 0. That means when 6 pi r minus 200 over r squared equals 0. First thing you notice about this equation is it's got fractions, get rid of those fractions. Multiply everything by r squared. 6 pi r cubed minus 200 equals 0. Because that would just be the same as take that term over, leave the 200 and bring the r squared back to multiply. That's what I'm going to do in the next line anyway. So you start to solve that. So you've got 6 pi r cubed equals 200. There's only one mention of r, so you can find r just by removing all the bits and pieces. 
So r cubed will be 200 over 6 pi. And then finally, r will just have the one value because it's the cube root. But I may as well cancel that down. That's 100 over 3 pi. Now, usually you leave results in an exact form. You know, if it's something like the square root of 7 and so on, but that's just a wee bitty convoluted. So I might as well also put down what that's equal to. On your calculator then, that's 2.197, etc. So that would be 2.20 metres to near a centimetre. But now you've got to justify. Even though it says minimises, you've got to justify that this actually minimises it. So you've got the two roots. You can use a nature table or you can use the second derivative. Sometimes when the second derivative is just a wee bitty messy, you're better off just using a nature table. Nature table first of all. So it's R, something happens at, I think I'll just stick with this value here. So for a dashed of R, I know that at this value exactly, the answer is zero. Now I need something before it. Well, something before it would be one, and something after it, oh, I could go all the way to 10. I'm just looking for numbers to put into this expression. Now, if R is one, then you'll be subtracting 200 from 6 pi, so that's quite definitely negative. When r is 10, you'll only be subtracting, because that'll be 100, you'll only be subtracting 2 from 60 pi, so that'll definitely be positive. Which means that the shape looks like this, which means you've got a minimum turning point, just to borrow the expression, because strictly speaking, we're just talking about functions. I should say a minimum turning value. Then you can finish it off and say, and just borrow this bit here, minimum area when r is that, then there's the justification. Or you can justify that it's a minimum by using the second derivative. Now, here was the first derivative. So the second derivative just means differentiate it again. What's the rate of change of the gradients, if you like? That will tell you if the gradients are slowing down, that would give you a maximum. If the gradients were speeding up, that would give you a minimum. Well, going from this expression, which I've got here, which is ideal for differentiating again, multiply by the power, that would make it 400. R to the negative 3 plus 6 pi. Just write out what that means again in a different order. 6 pi plus 400 over r cubed. So you want to know what's happening at one of these values. Put this value into it and see whether the answer is positive or negative. Well, actually, you don't need to put any either of these values in because this expression will always be positive if r is positive. So you should be able just to state it straight away. But I'll put it in anyway, because I can see there's a mark in the marking scheme for the value if you do it this way. So a dashed of, I'll use this value, even though it's a bit of a pest to write in here, because I can see I'm going to be cubing it here. So it should all turn out nice in the end. 6 pi plus 400 over r cubed. And when you cube it, it'll just turn back to 100 over 3 pi. So dividing by that, we'd be multiplying by 3 pi over 100. So that's 4 threes are 12, that's 18 pi. You knew it was going to be positive anyway. Notice this is all looking less convincing now in the amount you're having to write down here compared to a nice wee nature table. Sometimes it works out that way, because you've still got to make a statement. So a double dashed of, unfortunately, is greater than zero. That means they're curving like this which means you've got a minimum. I'll just say turning point to borrow the expression. Then transfer it here, and that's it, done.